So welcome everyone. I'm just so glad that you're here. I see so many people that I know and it's just wonderful to see all of you all. And I see um, names that I don't know. So I'm hoping we get to meet really soon in the future. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Kim Turk. Um, I am a licensed massage and bodywork therapist. I'm nationally certified um, from the board in massage and bodywork therapy. Um, and I'm a massage therapist with both the Duke Health and Fitness Center and Duke Integrative Medicine. So I've been a therapist for whew, about 22 years now. So just a little while. Um, I'm going to just give you some general things today and hope that um, those will be helpful to you and then we can address specifics when we have time and then we'll aggregate all the questions about specific things um, that you all want to know about and possibly do some future classes on very specific issues that might be helpful to you. Um, so um, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about what I have heard most people have been experiencing um, and the muscle discomfort that that might have uh, caused. And in talking with people, um, there seems to be two groups. There seems to be a group that is doing the weekend warrior routine and um, really getting out there and you know working in the yard and, and making the garden and uh, painting the laundry room and doing all these things. Um, but instead of being a weekend warrior, they're almost an everyday warrior, right? Um, we don't say weekend now, we don't say Sunday, we just say day, right? <laughs> Um, and then, um, there's certain muscle pain that is coming up that. And then there seems to be a group who are taking great advantage of all these free classes online. Um, there are meditation classes, there are yoga classes, there are fitness classes. Um, there's all these things online that people are putting out for free, um, which are great to take advantage of while we can. Um, but that does mean that um, we're getting what I'm calling the Zoom butt, right? <laughs> we're, we're sitting on the butt for a long period of time um, on the Zoom and the WebEx and all those, you know, fancy things now that we didn't know how to use two months ago. And now we know really well. So um, in, in those two people, um, groups of people, we're finding that there are, um, you know, pains. So um, the folks that are getting out and doing the weekend warrior stuff, um, I'm hearing that they're having pain uh, with their back, their shoulders, um, knees, hips, and feet. Um, and then folks that are sitting a lot, of course, are also having some neck problems because we tend to do the, you know, the thing like this. We push our head into the computer as if, you know, we're going to get more information if we lean in, right? Didn't want to make any of y'all dizzy, sorry. So um, there's a lot of neck pain that goes with sitting at the computer. There's piriformis pain from sitting on your butt for a long period of time. There's wrist pain from using your mouse. Um, some of you might've gotten really good at solitaire in the last two months, but your, your little mousing wrist might be hurting quite a bit. So um, I, I, wanna, I wanna talk about some of those things that we can do. And I'm just gonna talk today about two tools that hopefully most of you have at home that you can use for these things. Um, so first, I do wanna say, if you are concerned in any way that this is a new pain that's unfamiliar to you that you've never had before, um, or if it's a debilitating pain in any way, please contact your doctor. Many, many doctors now are doing telehealth so that you can call in and have either a video or um, a phone call with them. Um, I don't want you to think that this takes place of anything that your doctor might be telling you to do. Um, so please call them if you're finding that you have something that this doesn't seem reasonable to you or is it not going away, all right? Um, so for, for each of these muscle issues that are not debilitating, um, gentle to moderate exercise is really going to be helpful. Um, and you might think the weekend warrior, well, they're already out there doing a lot of exercise, but what happens is you're overusing one set of muscles too much. So um, 
you might want to take an online class such as um, our Duke Health and Fitness Center classes. We have a lot online right now. Um, I think we have some on YouTube and you can access those through our um, online website. And I would suggest that you start with strong and limber. Um, don't do the thing that we all think we need to do is we need to jump in and be a perfectionist from the very beginning. Um, we really want you to start with something new, start slow, move into it um, so that your body can acclimate. So if you start with strong and limber, um, you can kind of move into that um, and start to give your body some signals that, oh, we're going to use all the muscles in a balanced way. So even if you have been uh, an overdoer as a weekend warrior, um, you, can, you can take that class and get a more balanced stretch out of your body. And certainly if you've been sitting at the computer, it's good to take one of those classes. Okay, just go slow and start at your own pace. So two massage tools that I'm going to recommend that hopefully you already have at home. I have all my toys over here, so you'll see me looking over here. Um, Yeo tennis ball and the golf ball, right? And if you have a tennis ball and a golf ball, you can solve a lot of problems. Um, I suggest that if you use a tennis ball, I want you to use it against a wall. A lot of people use tools on the floor and they get on the floor and they put a tool underneath them and then they use their body weight. So if you're already adept at using something like this, that's great, that's fine. But what we're concerned about is that, um, let's say you're using this um, under your hips and if you put it on the floor and you put your body weight on it, you're also having to kind of tighten other muscles to be able to accommodate, um, not putting too much weight or putting a little less weight on the ball. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to make another muscle angry while you're trying to, you know, have your body be more relaxed. So if you will use a tennis ball against the wall, it'll be really helpful. Um, I suggest that you keep the tennis ball away from any bony prominences. So that means the spine. I don't want you putting a ball um, against the spine. If you want to put it on the side of your neck, that's fine. Um, something a little softer at the neck might be better. Um, you can put this tennis ball between your spine and your shoulder blade and lean up against the wall and just kind of roll around. Just make sure that that ball doesn't roll onto the shoulder blade and doesn't roll onto the spine, right? You want to do more of a up and down roll with that to just soften those muscles in between the shoulder blades, especially if you've been leaning forward or you've been moving a lot of mulch with a shovel. Um, use this um, all the way down your back, okay? Um, again, being really careful of the spine. When you get down to the top of the hips, um, you wanna think about your pelvis and where that is and stay off of those bones, but right around the bottom of the um, back and where the hips start um, is where um, a lovely couple set of muscles live um, called quadratus lumborum. And they start at the bottom of your last rib and they go down to your pelvis. And they're, they're little muscles that when you lean forward, they get really upset. And many of you that have seen me before um, have come to me with, um, pain in that area in the low back. And when people say their back went out, that's usually what they mean. They mean that those muscles have gotten really angry. Um, and it's the, the muscle that you can abuse and abuse and abuse by leaning forward into sink doing dishes or leaning forward into the computer or leaning forward doing some yard work. And then you do something simple like put a dish in the dishwasher and you find yourself on that little piece of carpet that your family member has to drag you into the living room to put you on the sofa. So we want to be careful with those two muscles especially. So the tennis ball is great for that. Again, more is not better, right? So start out gently. What we don't want to do is we don't want to use a tool and dig into that tissue because just like before you notice somebody coming in a car too fast and your body tightens up, um, if you go too fast with a tool, your body will do that same tightening. So I like to do what I call sneaky deep so that you start out really gently and working into the tissue 
And as it starts to loosen, then you can apply more pressure. But please, if you're a beginner with this, start out really, really gentle. The object is to calm the muscles down, not cause them to flare. Traveling on down, you can use this tennis ball into the top of the glutes. There are a lot of trigger points there. You can move it down into uh, the piriformis area. And many of you um, have, have been told by people that you have sciatica. And sciatica is actually a nerve irritation um, above the glutes in the low back. Piriformis syndrome is actually an irritation of the muscle tissue in the glutes. And the piriformis goes from um, the bottom of the spine, the sacrum, and it travels across the glutes and attaches to the leg bone, okay? It attaches to the femur. So that um, that little muscle is easy to irritate. Um, too much walking, too little walking. Too much standing, too much sitting. Um, it doesn't like extremes. So you can take your tennis ball and lean up against the wall and put that ball, um, I'm gonna say right in the meats of your glutes, right? So not at the sacrum, not at the bone of your hip, but just right in the middle. And you'll find a natural little divot in there that the ball will fit nicely into and you can roll up and down. You can practice your squats against the wall if you'd like at this time, right? Um, and just roll up and down and side to side and that will help um, the hips a lot. Uh, you can also use this um, against the wall on the side of your legs. Um, you can go down the side of the thighs. And then if you're gonna use it on the lower legs, I want you to take your hand and use the tennis ball on the top of the leg, on the calf there, and then um, you can put the ball on the floor and roll your calves across the ball. Um, to, you're not gonna put too much pressure at that point, right? So that's ye old tennis ball. That's really, really helpful and cheap and easy to get. I hope some of you have them at home. Kim, there's a quick question about whether or not you could do a demonstration. And I don't know if you have the capability with where you're sitting in your, in your home or not. Yeah. Or if maybe we could um, maybe do that next time. We can do that next time. I can be set up a, against a doorway so that okay. I, can, I can do some of these things for folks. Yeah. The, the sofa is not really going to help us here. So um, it's my Zoom office, the, the living room sofa. Um, so the other thing um, you can use is a golf ball. Please, please, please don't use this around your neck. It's easy to slip and bang into your spine, and that's not going to be a happy feeling for you, okay? Um, while you're seated in your chair, in your chair, in a show, you can put this golf ball underneath your feet. And I would use one at a time and roll the entire foot. By doing that, you're stimulating reflexology points. And a lot of you have heard about reflexology, but the way that I interpret it is that if you look at the nervous system, the nerves end in the feet, the hands up here in the head. So when you use the golf ball underneath your feet, you're stimulating all those nerves. And every nerve goes to a specific organ and a specific part of the body. So if you, you look at the foot, the, the very top of the foot is the top of your body. And as you go down the foot, you travel down to the lower part of your body. And that's where those nerve endings live. And if you can use the golf ball to roll all up and down the foot, you stimulate those nerve endings. Actually, help support them in the entire body and you can calm it down. What I would ask you to do before you do any of these types of relaxation things is to take your pain number beforehand. So let's say on a zero to 10 scale, um, zero, you feel so great, better than you've ever felt, and 10, you're so miserable you can hardly move. Um, I want you to take your pain number before you start something. And let's say I did a lot of gardening, um, yesterday in the yard and my back hurts. Maybe it hurts like about maybe a seven, seven and a half. And then after I use the tennis ball and roll out, I notice that I feel maybe down to a four, okay? So um, it's, it's good for you to know and keep track of your pain number so that if you do have to go to the doctor or call the doctor, 
um, you can give them an idea of what you're doing, what's helping, what's not, and what your pain number is, okay? Kim, I have another question about whether or not a soft stress ball could be used in yep. lieu of maybe a tennis ball or a golf ball. Yeah, so I have this ball. Um, I don't have any affiliation with Amazon or any of these products, but um, I got these off of Amazon. I'm always buying little massage tools to see if they work for people so I can recommend them. And these are on Amazon underneath like foot massage and they're used, they have little, um, little balls, little holes in them. And so they're meant for, um, for feet, but you can use those for your back as well. It comes with a little booklet telling you how to use it. Um, and actually um, I had a patient with ALS whose hands were starting to close and we put these balls in his hand to keep his hand open. So you can use it for hand exercises you can use it on your back. So thanks, Jen. Yeah, you can, you can, some people use a lacrosse ball. I find it's a little too hard for me, but you know, different people have different tolerances. So yeah, you can, you can use anything that's not going to injure you. Um, let's see, what else do I have here in the toy box? Um, I have this, it's called a neck massage tool and it looks really freaky, but um, you can pull these out and adjust them, right? And then you can put them behind your head and you can kind of give yourself a little neck massage. And they're cheap. They're like 12 bucks or something. They're not going to replace me. Let me just say that. All right. So you still need to come see me. But um, these are great to just kind of work the back of your neck, especially if you're on the computer a lot. And wow, we might just end the webinar right here because this feels good and I might just, you know, work on myself for a while. But, but these are good to have. Um, can, also, can you um, tell us what that is called again? Um, I just searched on the internet under um, neck massage tool. They're like $12 and up. So they're not very expensive. Just, you know, be careful. You want to stay away. So the carotid artery is kind of here in the front. If, if you're working on your body and you feel a heartbeat, stop. Right? You don't want to mess on anything that's actually supplying your heart. So you want to be careful there. Um, also, I have something called a tiger tail, and it's a hard rubber ball with a string on it, um, so that if I'm using this behind my back, um, and I, it kind of rolls off, I don't have to go across the room and chase it, or I don't have to take it out of my dog's mouth, right? Bailey loves a ball. So um, this is nice because I can put this around my wrist and put it behind my back and do some rolling on my body. And, and if it falls, I still have it. So again, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I don't get free products. So um, I just have bought lots of stuff to help myself out. Um, I would really ask you, if you are doing an intense thing, like you're on the computer for a couple of hours or you're, you're doing your work for, I would ask you to take little mini breaks. I am not good at that. Um, I, I put in a garden bed this weekend and I worked almost seven hours and then I wondered why I hurt the next day, right? So I did the whole Epsom salt bath thing and I did a little ibuprofen. I did some rolling. Um, but try to make yourself take little mini breaks. And if you need to set an alarm or, you know, make a set list for, for songs for like just 30 minutes or an hour so that when the set list is over, you know, to stop and take a little mini break. Um, you know, if you're on the computer, get up, go outside, take your phone, call your grandkids, or check on your neighbor that might need something. Um, just get up and get away from what you're doing. You need to know that fascia is of a material and the muscles are of a material that they start to tighten up and set and support what we're doing in about 20 minutes. So like if you were making jello on the stove and it's nice and fluid, like you want your muscles to be, and then you put that jello in the refrigerator, um, the next day you could take that jello out of the mold and throw it against the wall. It's not going to move, right? And our muscles start to do that. They start to gel at about 20 minutes. So if you're, you're in a position where you're not moving, um, I would suggest you do something every 30 minutes, even if it's just stretching or looking behind yourself, you know, moving your neck from side to side, do something to reset that gelling time. 
um, so that when you get up, you're not stiff as a board. I was talking to um, uh, one of our yoga instructors uh, yesterday and she said, oh yeah, I, I get up and move around because if I don't, I look like an old lady when I get up. And I thought, oh, I would never think that she would walk around and move like an old lady because she's so fluid in her movements. So it happens to all of us, right? Um, I also want to touch on the difference between heat and ice. A lot of you have questions about if a muscle is tight, should I use ice or heat? And there's an old massage therapist joke about um, ask for a massage therapist if you should use heat or ice and you get 12 answers because it depends, right? So my official answer is that your body has an affinity for either heat or ice. If your body, when it's sore and you put a heating pad on your shoulder and you feel that, ah, oh, like you just kind of fall down a notch, then your body really likes heat. If you have a knee that's been injured for years and you work out and it starts to swell up and bother you after that and you put ice on it and that calms down and you feel better, then use ice. Typically, I like heat for any muscle that's really tight and holding on because that heat vasodilates the tissue and causes it to open up and calm down. Um, ice for me is if you have sprained your ankle or something's bleeding or torn, right? Um, you can use heat and ice um, alternating. If you do that, I want you to start always with ice. Um, when you take the ice off after 10 minutes, and 10 minutes is really all you need, um, let the body come back to a normal body temperature. So if you're icing your arm, you wanna feel the other arm and just make sure they're the same temperature. And then you can put on the heat no longer than 15 minutes. You're not gonna get any more benefit after um, 15 minutes than you would um, the first 15. And then let the body come back to normal body temperature and you can go back to ice. So always start with ice always end with heat if you're going to use both okay um Kim um can we save a little bit of time for just how all of this ties into stress management and stress reduction oh absolutely a handful of questions about that and I've I've certainly for all the folks listening I've taken um a plethora of notes on all of your requests for future sessions so please know that they have been noted down but stress reduction was was a big one and maybe you could just share a, a brief bit about how it just ties into what you've just shared. Right, so we know that this is a unique time in history. No one that I've spoken with, and I have some people I know in their 90s, um, has ever experienced anything like this. So it's, it's been stressful on many different levels. And it doesn't matter if you're just home with all your resources you need and the food and toilet paper you need, it's still very stressful, right? So what happens during stressful times is that our body builds up cortisol and that's not really good for the system, okay? And so anything you can do to relax your body, be it self-massage with tools, um, be it um, family members rubbing each other's feet on the sofa, be it doing meditation, be it doing exercise, yoga, anything you can do to support your body right now and kind of bring that stress level down a notch. Um, I've been doing some of the um, meditations that have been offered for free online and that has really helped me to kind of bring that panic and fear level down a little bit. Um, trying to stretch, trying to walk, um, spend time with my dog um, and you know doing these Zoom kind of things have been a lot of fun. So anything you can do that will turn those chemicals off and bring that stress level down for your body is so helpful. Um, and everybody knows what feels best for them. The issue is to do it, right? So I know that, that getting out in the yard makes me feel better, um, but maybe I'm really hooked into this computer and taking a class, right? So. Um, I'd also, um, I'd, I'd ask you all to, to look at what other things can support your system. So I have some things here and I'll just 
I know we want to have time for questions, but I have a few things that I use. Um, if you're really, really in a lot of pain, um, our puncture is usually long. Now, it stinks to high heaven. You will smell like your grandma, okay? But um, it's a huge plaster. You can cut it up and put it on areas of your body that are in pain. And if you can stand the smell, I kind of like it, but if you can stand the smell, it's very helpful for you. Can I you also um, cut out just a little bit there? Do you mind sharing what that is again for folks? Yeah. It's called Wu Yang. And you can buy it online. Um, and it, it is, um, I think it's Chinese. There's a lot of writing on here I can't read. Um, but, so yeah, we can type it in the chat. So, W-U-Y-A-N-G, Wu Yang. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, also, like I say, I'm not sponsored by any of these people, but I use Tiger Balm. I use it all the time. You see it's in a little container, right? You don't need to use much. You don't need your um, I'm a, a weather person. So um, before the storm came last week, I could tell you 24 hours before the storm came because my hip and my knee were killing me. So I just put a little um, tiger bomb on my knee and my hip, and that helped a lot. Um, I'm also a fan of Salon Paws patches. Um, they're just like those big pain patches you get um, at Eckerd's. We don't have Eckerd's anymore. Walgreens and um, those kind of places. Um, but they're a lot less expensive and they're smaller. So um, they're, they're on two sides of this little paper, right? And you peel it off, you put it on yourself. On the back, please read the instructions. It says no longer than eight hours. I've had clients show up on my table who've been wearing these for 24 hours and then we peel them off and they have all these red irritated patches. It's, it's a chemical heat, right? So eight hours is the maximum. I put these on myself all the time. Um, if, you, if you bump yourself and get a bruise, Arnica, it's very helpful. It's good for um, bruises. It helps bruises heal faster. It's great for pain. And um, also, I will say that if you have cramps in the night, um, the number one reason for cramps is dehydration. So make sure you're drinking enough water. The second reason is 66% of our population is deficient in magnesium. So I use this um, magnesium roll-on that has Arnica in it. And so if I feel like I'm gonna get a cramp in the night, I'll use this magnesium roll-on. Um, it works differently than the internal magnesium that you take uh, that your doctor would prescribe you. But this is not a prescription. I get it off of Amazon. Um, and, or if I wake up in the night and I have a cramp in my leg, I'll just roll this on really quickly. It works very fast because it works transdermally. So how about let's take some questions. Do we have a general? Um, uh, yeah, so going back to the heat and ice conversation, there was a question regarding what type of heating tools you might recommend. Right, so I like a heating pad. It doesn't matter to me if it's moist or not. I don't care about that. Um, most heating pads now have um, an automatic turn off that after you've used them for a while, they're turned off. Please don't use them longer than 15 minutes and please don't tell me you've been sleeping with them because that's not good for your tissue, right? So the tissue gets overheated and then your body starts relying on that and doesn't self-regulate what it needs to do for you. Um, so any kind of heating pad out there, um, they make, you know, probably eight different kinds, but it doesn't matter. Um, I do like the bags that you can put in the microwave. I'm pointing in my kitchen. Um, I like the bags that you can put in the microwave um, that have either like cherry pits or flax seeds or corn, those things in them, because you can heat them up nicely. They are a moist heat, and then they, they, come down to a nice cool temperature evenly and you're not gonna burn yourself. So we have time for just a couple of questions and I know everyone has again reached out with a lot of different ideas for future topics including leg tightness, 
hip, low back pain, glute pain, knee pain, Parkinson's, SI joint pain, shoulder and neck pain. So there's a lot of content to cover in the future and yeah. we certainly can't cover all of it today, but um, there are um, a couple of questions in the chat box regarding carpal tunnel um, okay. and seizing of hands and for those who've been sitting at the computer for long hours. Oh, I would love to show you all some stretches that are very effective. So we know that some people have carpal tunnel surgery. We know that's about 50% effective. So if you do the stretches every day, you actually can stave that off, right? Most people can. Some people do need the surgery. And if your doctor says you need it, you need it, right? But um, the stretches I would do for carpal tunnel, um, I'm just going to show you as best I can here in front of the computer. So take your hand, the heel of your hand here, and push away from your body. So you're aiming this part of your hand like you could touch the wall across the room, right? So you just push. I'm not a fan of this. This is a mechanical movement that, that doesn't simulate normal movement. So just push the hand out, push that heel as far as you can away from you. Okay. And you're gonna do that in two seconds. Then this part of your hand, the top of the wrist, you're gonna push it away from you as far as you can for two seconds. And the reason you're gonna do it for two seconds is when a muscle is tight and you're going to stretch it, there's a rebound that happens at two seconds. So we like a two second stretch over time to stretch that out. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand. I know this looks a little creepy on Zoom, I'm sorry. Um, you take your hand so that the thumb is out to the side and you bring your other hand underneath, not grabbing the thumb, and you pull that thumb down, right? So you're kind of pushing your hand off to the side. And then you come back to neutral, you bring that hand around here, then you come over the top and you pull down and pull as far as you can on that wrist. Now, don't force it, please, right? Do a nice gentle stretch. So it's going to look like this. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. 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 Basically, you're taking your wrist in every plane of movement because everything that operates that hand is connected up here. So that if you do those stretches, it'll stretch out all um, your extensors so that your wrist will be more happy. Kim, there was an additional question about the piriformis muscle. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that you can necessarily stand up and share it, but I could um, share my screen um, and show a photo of it that I pulled up on Google. Oh, great. Thank you. That would be very helpful. We can, we can talk to that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let me do that. Okay. So you see that um, Jen has pulled up this piriformis muscle. It looks tiny and it looks like it wouldn't be any trouble at all. And that's a lie. Um, <laughs> so it lays right there in the middle of the bum and it can be very debilitating. Um, so what you don't see is that it, on, on some of these images off to the left, you see that it actually connects to that sacrum bone, right? That little triangle looking bone um, in the middle of your butt. It's the end of your spine. And it attaches there and it goes all the way over to the femur, which is that long leg bone and it attaches there. So that you can see that if you took a step forward, that um, piriformis muscle would be stretched. And then when your leg comes back, when the other leg goes forward, um, it, it pulls back in. So it's stretched and pulled back in. And if you're sitting on that for a long time, what happens is the sciatic nerve runs right underneath that piriformis muscle. And if you're smashing um, that piriformis by sitting on it or overdoing it, then you irritate the sciatic nerve and you have pain that goes down your leg. And that's why it's misdiagnosed sometimes as um, sciatica when it's actually just piriformis pain. So thank you for that question. So I think we have time for just one more, and I don't know if this is the, um, I'll, I'll leave it to you, any okay. techniques for lymph massage? Yeah, so that needs to be a whole nother class. I'm happy to teach that. Um, I do that for a lot of my cancer patients that have had lymph nodes removed, 
and there's a very specific sequence and a very specific way that you move that fluid, but people absolutely can do it themselves. And so I would be happy for us to do that in the future. And I could teach a technique for both the um, upper extremity and the lower extremity. And we could do like a, a full body. I could set it up so you could see all of my body and we could do that whole thing. Well, thank you, Kim, for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining in. Um, Again, it's been great to see everyone and to see all oh, these yeah. familiar familiar faces. There were a few questions about our, our classes and our virtual options. So I will quickly share my screen one last time for people to be able to see um, what we're referring to when we talk about kind of what's happening on our website and on our virtual page if people are interested. So let me just do that real quickly. So here is our um, website, dukefitness.org. So there is no www in front of it. That often will throw people off. So just dukefitness.org, it takes you to our main website. And what you find here is a virtual offerings button right at the very top of our website. If you click that button, it's gonna take you to all of our virtual offerings that we currently have, whether it's fitness, nutrition, we're doing telenutrition services. Um, right here, this live stream classes and videos button will take you to our um, live stream classes and videos page, which I just clicked on. Here you can find a link to our workout videos that we've already pre-recorded that are on YouTube. So if you just click that, it will take you to that page. And then down here are the different Zoom links for the different live classes that we've just launched this week. And, and I can assure you that there are more classes on the way. We are um, still learning how to use all of these new tools and technology. So uh, for Kim and I, this was our first live session. So we appreciate your patience. Um, if there were any glitches, but I think it went um, very smoothly. And again, be sure to check that out. Again, dukefitness.org and then virtual offerings will share um, all of the, the information that we have going on on, the, on that page. So thank you again, everyone. And uh, we, hope, so we, hope, we hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you all.